APIs are the building blocks of modern applications. They're how humans and applications exchange data and send commands over the internet. They're a bit like the human nervous system. Request, response, request, response. And they become the neural network of the cloud. Behind every interface, millions of APIs power the experience. And as the customer experience becomes the focus, the role of APIs has never been more crucial. API traffic accounts for more than 80% of global internet traffic, yet we're still in the early days. We're on the verge of trillions of connected APIs, and the number of interactions between services is only increasing. Keeping trillions of reliable connections running and secure 24-7 will be a mind-blowing task. It's a jungle out there. APIs need to become smarter, and so do the ways we build, design, run, and govern APIs and services. We're the builders and visionaries blazing a trail forward. Together, we can innovate. Let's go. The nervous system, the most sophisticated system in the world. The nervous system allowed us to move, to think, to experience life. Like a dancer, it's fluid, yet precise. It's secure. It keeps us on the go. It makes us feel things. It also allows us to experience the outside world. It's who we are. To be or not to be. The experience that we are seeing it today, how we feel, that's billions of chemical and electrical impulse that goes through our body right now. It will make us humans the most advanced species, at least on this planet. The nervous system is divided between the peripheral and the central nervous system. The peripheral and the central nervous system. The central nervous system is the brain and the spine. It's where everything comes together. It's what gives us the intelligence. While the heart is the most vital organ, the nervous system is the most critical one. You can replace your heart, but you can't replace your brain. And then we have the peripheral nervous system. It goes all the way through our head to our body, from our fingers all the way down to our feet, allows us to give outputs to the world and also receive inputs. And it does it at millisecond speed or even less. It never misses an inch. That's the power of the peripheral nervous system. Now, I hope you are thinking, why is he talking about the nervous system? Well, because the nervous system, it's built on request, response, life cycle. Request, response, life cycle. That's exactly 
our APIs work. Request, response. And thanks to the proliferations of APIs, we are able to build this amazing digital experience in our life. Whether it's an Alexa device, Samsung fridge, a Tesla car, whatever is the user interface, touch, voice, everything is shared through APIs underneath, the building blocks that makes all this experience that we'll live today. Now, it's used to say that software is eating the war. Well, let's say APIs are heating software. That's right. APIs are heating software. I want to give you two example, two live example of what that means at scale. Those are two organizations that we all know, and those are two real snapshots of thousands of services brokering billions or trillions of requests internally to make the organization fast, to innovate fast, to be secure, programmable. They were able to transform their businesses and launch new digital revenue streams or entering new markets. They were able to innovate very fast, whether it's creating cloud infrastructures, whether it's moving DVD to online streaming. And those are just from a few years ago. So you could imagine what they are today. Now, a lot of us, a lot of our organizations, our teams, they want to build, we all want to build this innovation. And so how we build the future, how we build organizations of the future, is three main components. Number one, it's powered by software. No matter what business, what vertical, what geo, it won't matter. What it matters that is powered by software. Software, it's programmable, exactly like our nervous system. It rewires itself based on the most recent needs. Things we don't need anymore start to detach. The software is programmable like the nervous system. The number two, companies are becoming smarter and smarter because they make decisions on data. It's data-driven decisions. Like our nervous system, we move an, an enormous amount of data in our body. And with great data coming from all this digital experience, we can make great decisions. And we can become smarter and smarter. And number three, we have to be secure. As we have thousands and thousands of APIs, how we find them, how we secure them, how we protect them. But nervous system is very secure. So if we have those three, that's how we're building the organization of the future. Make it programmable, smart through data, and secure. And that's what API first, that's what API do. They do all the three. They move data, cheapest, fastest, common language. They interact with inside and outside makes our software, our platforms programmable, and then we secure it. Human evolution took millions of years to build the nervous system as we know it today. And we're doing it to our organization in just a few years. But it really started in 2002 with the API mandate. And it started to grow exponentially from there. Now, you would think, and that's why we're all here, yes, of course, right? We believe in API. We want to do more APIs. 
But sometimes we forget what's coming and where are we. Well, we are just at the beginning. There is a massive exponential wave coming at us. While it was 2002, in the history of time, that's nothing. And how do we know? We know it because every time we talk with customers, we share thought with customers, they, everybody's at a different time of their journey. You might have 10 APIs. You might have 5,000 APIs, 500. It doesn't matter where you are. All of us believe we're going to have way more three, five years from now, 10 times more. That's the common share. So that's the wave that is coming at us. It's just getting started. Now, those drunk dots and lines there along the journey, that's technical debt. Now, let's go and look inside. Has we opened thousands of connections? There is one ask, the number one ask from that architects and platform leaders get all the time. It's the number one, we get a lot of ask, but the number one, resilience, resilience, resilience. This thing can go down. TTM, time to mitigations. Those are the data, the objective that as a platform we got to achieve. And so how we do that, how we keep our connection secure, how we can observe them at scale when we have billions of those, how we govern the access control, how we encrypt traffic so we're always in compliance. We don't have our CISO running in the highway. This is the problem that we're starting to see, and we're going to see, as you see the exponential wave, 10 times more. So that's what we do. The Kong technology make it reliable, secure, observable. It runs on time, like the peripheral nervous system. So once we do that at scale, we can build memorable digital experience, or I should say delicious. This is an example where Papa Jones, during the pandemic, they had 5,000 locations, 5,000 locations. The digital apps, they start to produce 70% of their revenue, making the highest grossing month through these digital channels. And they were able to accelerate their productivity three times over. And it happened very fast. But like Papa Jones, there is a lot of more examples. There's all sorts of business outcomes. Whether we go all the way to Middle East in finance with FAB, we're able to decrease cost of ownership. Or we go back here in the US with Cargill. It was funded over 150 years ago. And is innovating at the speed of light, from soils to protein. And they're able to achieve amazing business outcomes. 65 more speeds in productivity. And those are just a few examples. And like those, there is so much more. There's many of the story across our customers, our community, Imagine it's evening, you finish work, you go and open your NASDAQ app, and you go and look at all your stocks. Hopefully, we haven't lost too much this year. And then, boom, you remember that you have a presentation the day after, completely forgot. So you rush and you open your mirror, and you start to sketch the talking points for that tomorrow presentations but you're getting a little bit tired. So you rush down to the Starbucks and open till late, you have no wallet, damn it. 
but you have a phone and you go and pay on Verifone Terminal, every Starbucks. Verifone was founded in 1981. It's called Verify Phone, Verify Telephones. That was Verifone. And now you throw the phone and you pay in a second through digitals. All those are API transactions. Then you go back up. Things are a little bit cold. You turn on the terminal stat, Honeywell, come to rescue. And then, of course, you have ordered that IKEA furniture online that you still have to build. These are different experience, different vertical, different geos, different business value, and different set of customer. But they all are connected through APIs. It's all connected. And so we've been talking about this peripheral nervous system and how that translates into APIs and the digital experience we are creating. So what's missing? What's the big idea? What's missing? It's a central nervous system. The one that manage, connect, and secure, orchestrate them all. That's what's missing in software. And that's with the feedback of all of you, we built ConConnect. And ConConnect was launched a year ago. And we've done tremendous improvement in the last year with your feedback. Like we say in Silicon Valley, it's kicking in. And Connect is now deploying over 300 new deployments per month. And our vision of Connect is our vision and your vision of having a central nervous system. That's what it is. And so to build the best central nervous system, you have to have a network effect. And you have to start from the peripheral side of the house. And so what's better than starting with the number one API technology in the world with Kong Gateway? Kong Gateway is used by over 30,000 companies worldwide. And for, this is for what we can see. There is much more out there. And to put things in perspective, Netflix once said a few years ago that 15% of worldwide internet bandwidth at peak is consumed by Netflix. 15% of worldwide internet bandwidth. When we compare that throughput with Kong, that's 17 times more. Kong produce alone 17 times more from what we can see. That's hell of a scale. And that's the scale that is required for the years to come. So I want to show you the vision of Connect. It's also where we are, but where we're going together. We started with Kong Gateway, but we have a lot of other API runtimes, Kong Ingress, Kong Mesh, and we have more obviously coming. And so we started with having a universal management plane that you can manage. Kong, but whatever other use case come in the future, mesh or ingress, load balancing that traffic for Kubernetes clusters. It's a multi runtime management plane that can do provisioning, can issue policies. That's unique. It does not exist in the industry. That's our vision. So you can support all kinds of nervous system use cases. Then we build the core. And this is the one that I'm very excited about it. Once we run all our traffic at the peripheral level, then we build the core of the platform. And at the core, there is the API registry, what we call service app. And I know how many of you have always asked the question, how many APIs do we have? Who is using them? Where they are? And it's hard to get that answer. We've been trying for many, many years. And folks use different things. So the problem is that you cannot get a system of record. And if you don't have a system of record, your company, our company, we don't have the spine. 
And so this is a very strategic real estate that every platform leader, every technology leader, believe in it. And so how we can build a system of records? We can do that because we have the runtimes. We are proxying already all APIs. And we can do that in real time and keeping an up-to-date system of record because we are proxying the traffic. So we can tell you every second which APIs you have running. And those are the ones that matters, not the zombie one. And we can do it because we have the runtime. So we have this connection end to end. And once we have the spine, once we have the system of records, then we can apply all sort of governance and access control and federations, because we know that that's all we got. That's our system of record. And number two, we got a lot of data. And so we can build a data platform. So we can show observability. And it's not just analytics and insight. It's business intelligence. It's the health of our APIs. Which API is not documented? Which API is missing policy for authentications? Which API is not encrypt? Which API is quite slow every Friday at 3 PM? Let's see why. Why that pizza team is creating 50 APIs a quarter? Why that pizza team is only creating two APIs a quarter? What's going on? We can show all sort of things and then correlate all of them because we have the system of records. So all of that is unified through great dashboards. But Connect itself, it's programmable, of course. We use all our technology. We use Kong Gateway to run Connect. We use Kong Mesh to run Connect. We use all our stuff. But it's programmable itself. It's an API. So on top, we can build all sort of applications to expand our API power. Today, we have the developer portal. But we can do API logs. We can go and do API billing. We can go and build caching. We can build all sort of expansions. And yes, we build those, but partners can build them on top of Connect. So API providers got all sort of add-ons. That's the ultimate platform. That's our vision. And of course, we want our APIs to get consumed. So Insomnia, tightly integrated with Connect, allows us to consume our APIs. And then last but not least, once we have all those APIs running, we want to publish some of them and monetize and maybe have different digital streams. But all they say, you know, build it, and that will come. We build all this API, and nobody never comes. So what we want to do is build a, a universal API store. So you can publish in a universal place, millions of developers that can consume things easily, with kind of the same credentials, same credit cards, like an app store. And we can do that because we have all the source of truth, all together. So this is the vision of Connect. It's built completely on Kong technologies, Obviously, we're just getting started, getting a lot of feedback, improving every quarter. But this is where the world is going. And we want to go with this vision with all of you. So let's get now Gabriella on stage to show us what Con Connect looks like managing Con Gate to Enterprise 3.0. Let's welcome Gabriella on stage. Welcome. Hearing you talk about an API system of record really resonated with me. I don't know if you know this, but on the side, I've been moonlighting as the chief architect at Kong Airways. How's it going? Kong Airways has taken off since we started using Kong's products. And the latest product we've been using from them is Connect. We've been using Connect to manage all our internal external, and partner APIs. Nice. Let's go check it out. Of course. I can yes. show it. So I'll first show you the service hub. I'm going to log in.
I'll first show you the Service Hub as we were talking about an API system of record. This is our API registry. That's nice. Is it everyone can consume any kind of APIs? No. Connect provides powerful, fine-grained permissions right out of the box. For example, I'm in the chief architect role, so I can see all the services, but Hayden, who's on the logistics team, can only see the plain location service. Nice. Let's, uh, let's go look. Yeah, of course. Let's dive in. This is the cargo service, and it provides everything that you need right at your fingertips. One of the areas I like looking at first is the continuous traffic coming through the service. You can see that the continuous traffic is coming from two service versions in production and one that's in staging. As we go through, you can see that most of the traffic is coming through V2. So let's dive in and check the traffic out of V2. In V2, you can see that most of the traffic is coming through 200. Everything's going to be 200, OK. Yeah, yeah. But right now, there's a bit of 400 and 500 errors, more than we would like. I would usually export this data and dive in a bit more. But I've made a custom report already, so let's check that out. In Connect, I can create unlimited custom reports. Custom reports is as easy as a couple clicks. And if we look at one that I've already made, we can see that it provides a little bit more rich functionality than we saw on the pre-built reports. Per usual, I will go in and export the report. No waiting to get a coffee while you wait for the report to render. Instead, it was immediately downloaded, as you can see in the bottom left. Gago coffee? Yes, anything with caffeine. Going to the overview page is what I do, actually, every morning after I get a cup of coffee. Coffee comes first. And I look at the traffic, errors, <laughs> and latency. That's a hell of a latency. Yeah, we're, we're working on a couple things still. But thanks to Kong and Connect, we can go in and get full visibility into our system and make the changes that we need. So uh, what? What, this traffic is coming from developers. Yes. What, yeah, is this really coming from developers or machines or? Yeah, great question. It's coming from developers. And those developers are using Connect's developer portal that we've built upon. I actually built a system during lunch, uh, actually yesterday, just yesterday, made this whole system, but it's a little bare bones. So I think this is a great opportunity to let me show you how easy it is to add a service. Going back to the cargo service, publishing to the portal is as easy as that. And then we'll want to go to V2 and enable app registration. When we do this app registration, it will run with Kong Gateway Enterprise 3.0. We do auto-approve so developers get immediate access on the dev portal to the service. And you can see that automatically what's been added is a plugin. And what this plugin does is it ensures that developers provide an API key when they want to access one of the servers on the developer portal. As the chief architect, I am thrilled by this level of automated control and governance that I am providing automatically to the service for the developer. Now, going back in the dev portal, I'm going to log in as Michael. Michael works at Kong, and he's using the Kong Airways developer portal. Here, you can see that Cargo was published just that quickly. And Michael will go in to V2, as we've been using. And you can see that documentation is right here, front and center for him. As the chief architect, my team has gone in and created API standards that we've pushed to the dev portal so that developers, like the ones that created the cargo service, adhere to these very detailed and high quality um, documentation. 
as Michael, I register for the application. Augie, what should we call it? Mm, Jumbo Jet. Jumbo Jet. That makes sense. And let's give it a unique ID. And we request access as Michael. And you can see it's immediate because of that auto approval we put in earlier. Also, as Michael, I have to go and create an API key because of the plugin that was automatically applied by the chief architect's team. It's a jumbo key. Jumbo key. Yes, it is jumbo key. And if we go to Insomnia, which Marco will be talking about in his presentation later today, I go and test my service as the good developer I am. I first try it without the API key, and I am unauthorized. As in now in the chief architect role, I'm thrilled that this plugin has actually worked and created this policy. Now I test it with the API code, and I get 200. OK. Yes, 200 OK. So we're in good standing. Everything has worked. Before we head off today, I want to show you one more thing. This is our plugins, and it's one of the most powerful things that Connect provides. For a developer that comes in, Connect is extremely simple and seamless experience. But if you're maybe my team and you want to apply OpenID Connect, or you're the service owner and you want to do rate limiting, you can just go into this library of pre-developed and managed by Kong plugins and apply these with just a few clicks. Imagine the developer productivity. If you don't see the functionality that you're looking for, it's as easy as creating your own custom plugin, and we can have it show up right in this plugin marketplace as well. Connect is infinitely extensible. The sky's the limit. Woo! Back to you, Augie. Thank you. This is just a sneak peek, but that's the vision of where we're going. So we can make our companies built and run like a nervous system. We got all the peripheral pieces. We got thousands of them. Now, with our central nervous system, we can move into that future that we saw before, built on software, on data, and that is also cyber secure. It's programmable, it's smarter, and it's safe. And we can now all do it with the central nervous system. So we can make our company going from siloed pipes and everything is kind of disconnected and make it smarter like neural connectivity. Thank you. Oh, <clears throat> one more thing. It's incredible the work that we've been doing with our partner of the year. AWS has been phenomenal for our customers, sharing so many stories, moving workload through the cloud, helping the coupling from monolithic to microservices. AWS this year is our most successful partner, and we're very thankful for that. But the one more thing is that today, 100% of your AWS committed spend is now usable on any Kong products. Just like that. And number two, Connect is now available on AWS Marketplace in a free trial mode. This is where one of the major ask. And today we bring it to you. And Connect is built on EKS. And with that, I would love to welcome on stage Barry, Vice President 
of AWS Kubernetes. Good to, uh, Good to see you. Welcome and thanks. Thank you for you know partner of the year. Yeah, thank uh, you very much. Appreciate it. So we maybe we go back and you know there's a lot of folks, technical leaders that you know your career is outstanding and maybe I, I want to know more on a personal level you know the inflection points on how you you became who you are today. <laughs> uh, I've been at this for a while. That's one thing. I had a full head of hair when I started. My family knows that. Um, I think I have a couple inflection points. I mean, so one, and you hear this from a lot of people, is you got to be willing to try new things. You got to want to learn. And I was lucky enough early in my career to have bosses who let me just do things, let me go try things, let me fail, even when they knew I was going to do it. They would teach me lessons that way. And I thought that really changed my whole perspective on taking risk. And so I think part of what really worked for me was just take some risks. Go try some things. I've done big companies. I've done small companies. I've done startup. I, I think that really gives you valuable experience. You were talking about the, the, the neural workings of the brain and these things. One of the things your brain does is it pattern matches really well. It takes that data you were talking about, and it pattern matches. If you give yourself a broad set of experiences, you really take on different kinds of problems, you'll start to see the patterns, right? And one of the things we were laughing at dinner last night with the crew, and we were talking about people looking at different kinds of situations and saying, I've seen this movie before and I know how it's going to end, usually in a bad situation like real estate markets. The same thing can apply, though, in tech. You can see the patterns start to emerge, and it really changes your behavior and how you can build on that. Nice, nice. It's like it's like an APIs too, right? You have full yeah. tolerance and all that built in. Uh, and so then it gets you to AWS, right? Now, Vice President of AWS. And what are you working on at AWS? So as you said, I'm the Vice President of Kubernetes. So all things Kubernetes are, are in my purview. Uh, it's an interesting job for a couple of different reasons, one of which is Kubernetes is a massive open source project. There's a lot of engagement with the community that we are responsible for as an organization. Uh, EKS is the core platform that we have. It's, it's been a very successful product for us, um, and we've been extending the, the breadth of that product over time. So you have sort of EKS, the core AWS service. You have EKS on Outpost for people who are running workloads in their data center, and you have EKS anywhere for people that want to run workloads on their own hardware anywhere. And Kong Connect is built you know, on, the, on EKS, so, so how, how AWS is working with Kong, maybe share a little bit like that on how we build you know, the best of breed SaaS solutions. Yeah, I mean, we, we appreciate your business. I uh, love partnering with you. And I think one of the things that we do, because we are obsessed about our customers and making sure that they're successful and our partners, we have people who are dedicated to Kong, people who actually spend their time understanding what's working well for you, where are you seeing challenges, what can we do to make this uh, a more successful, expansive system that meets the needs of both of our shared customers. What, what are the maybe, what are one of the best practices you see? With all we have a lot of customers in common bringing, but also maybe specific customers. You know, customer wants to build applications that are resilient, especially platform teams, or architect teams. They're secure, they're safe, and they and they run obviously on containers technology. And how how AWS EKS um, how is helping building those applications and how we're building it together. Yeah, I think um, part of it is that we have a lot of things built in by default. So one of the things that's great about uh, EKS as a managed service is some of that undifferentiated heavy lifting that people would normally have to do, build their own processes around, we take care of, right? So we offload work to let you focus on what's important to you. And then we can provide you SLA guarantees around that control plane that we're managing. We can wrap that with our security. It really helps people to kind of take a step back from some of the things they're less familiar with or they don't want to have to spend the time on and focus on their product, on building the things that actually matter to them. So, that gets you started and then wrap with that. We have blueprints and other technologies that we've provided to help people kind of understand what is a good best practice for observability, for scalability or security for your workloads as you're deploying those on the system. And that's a, we have a bunch of folks out here today actually at the booth who would be happy to walk you through the details of all those pieces. Um, but that's how we do that is we, we really work with our customers and our partners to provide a set of key tasks that you can follow to make sure that you're on the right track. Well, we're very happy, and I know a lot of customers that we help moving to, to Kong technology with also the AWS help, um, they're also super happy. So I want to thank you for the great partnership, and, and hopefully more, more to come for us, and more years to come for us, and even bigger. Indeed. Thank you.
Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, oh. everybody. Take care, man. So I want to really close it now with a real sincere thank you, because what is all possible here as we're going in this journey of building our own nervous system all together with all their feedback. I want to just thanks for this partnership, because this is a long journey like we saw at the beginning. It's a multi-decade journey. We're just getting started, but I feel we are all riding the beginning of a new era, a truly API era with a true system of record that makes our company programmable, data-driven, secure, like our nervous system, so we can build those organizations and make them the most advanced ones on the planet. Thank you.